I can't tell you how many times I've heard that you cannot shoot high ISO video using a high resolution body like this A7R5. Today, we are going to do a deeper dive into this and see if, in fact, there is a huge difference between something like this that has a 61 megapixel sensor that everyone says can't be used at higher ISOs versus the camera that I'm filming on right now, which is the FX3, which is world renowned for having the best low light performance. Let's jump into it. Okay, on my computer right now, I have queued up two different clips. Both of these were shot at 12,800 using the Sigma 85 1.4. I think I shot it at f2.2 and uh, the same shutter speed, same everything. But just looking at the images before we even get started, can you tell a difference between these two? All right, let's run it through. On the left-hand side is the A7R5 at 12,800 ISO, and the FX3 is on the right-hand side at 12,800 ISO. Now, something to note here right out of the gate is you'll notice this is handheld. I was sitting in a chair just kind of filming into the kitchen. I was doing it just to test this out and just see if this made sense uh, or if I was just imagining things. So anyways, it's handheld, and notice how much steadier already the A7R5 is versus the FX3. Again, exact same situation. And this is a non-stabilized lens, this 85 1.4. All right, now notice how long it's taking to acquire focus with the FX3 versus the A7R5. It grabs it immediately and then immediately goes back to the chair. Now I have the same settings set on the cameras in terms of autofocus speed and everything. So there's really no comparison here. The A7R5 does a much better job of both stabilizing the footage and acquiring focus. All right, now let's move downstairs to the basement. And I think this is actually a little bit um, easier to spot the difference between the two. You can see here in my face, um, my ugly mug, you can see that this is a little, little bit more smeared. And on the right hand side with the FX3, this is there's quite a bit more detail in the face here on the FX3. And this is on a tripod. Obviously, this isn't handheld. You'll also notice in the sweater, there's a, a quite a bit more noise on the E7R5 versus the FX3. This is nice and clean in the FX3. In the background, very difficult to tell, right? It's It looks very identical to me anyways. And then let's just pause it here on these two um, color charts because you can see they're pretty close. I mean, there's not much going on here. You don't see a lot, a whole lot of color noise here in the A7R5 footage. And of course you don't see it on the FX3, but it is a lot closer than I think I realized. And I'm glad I actually did this comparison side by side to see it for myself. Same thing with white balance here. Uh, colors actually look very accurate, both of them. They're both very similar. And I used auto white balance. Again, that was something I was testing out too, just to see if uh, it made sense to, um, you know, just trying it out anyways, just to see if it was consistent between the two. So there you go. Two side-by-side -side comparisons with A7R5 versus the FX3. Could you notice a difference between the two of them? Uh, in my mind, and I'm looking at the original footage, I can't even imagine what it looks like on YouTube, but with the original footage, the A7R5 does a phenomenal job at 12,800 ISO. And this narrative of, oh, you can't shoot high ISO on a high resolution body like this A7R5, I think is really not very accurate. Now, that being said, I am not a filmmaker. I do this as a hobby. I do this for like family outings. I do it for kids sports, uh, just general. Uh, I, I have a real estate business, so I use it to film uh, oftentimes indoors, interiors, stuff like that. If I'm doing like a, a video walkthrough for a, for a home, but uh, this is, in my opinion, absolutely 100% good enough. And the reason why I did this test is because I find myself grabbing this A7R5 like n at least 90% of the time when I'm walking out the door. And the reason why is because it's just such a great hybrid camera. It shoots 61 megapixel stills. And oftentimes I don't even use that. I shoot in medium raw, which gets me a 26 megapixel raw file. Uh, and in addition to that, the, having this screen that flips out in the back, 
is just incredible. I mean, this is this is the way that I prefer to shoot video and stills um, if I'm not using the EVF. But if I do have to use the EVF, it's like this 9.4 million dot EVF, and it's gorgeous. I absolutely love it. So this camera is like the do-it-all camera. And now that I I know and I can say with confidence that it it films quite well at 12,800 ISO, I'm not afraid to take it out even at night, depending on the lens that I'm bringing, of course. So I forgot to mention on the um, side by side down in the basement, that was not the 85 millimeter lens. That was a Sigma 24 millimeter. And I think I had it stopped down to like F5, I want to say, uh, just to, you know, make sure that I was getting the proper exposure. And it was all shot in S log three. And I was using, um, I forgot exactly what Cinematch I want to say I was using to, to grade the, the two different clips, but I graded them exactly the same. So it's consistent across the board, a7R5 versus the FX3. What do you think? Is it okay? Is it good enough for the average person who's using these cameras? Or do you think that the step up in quality from the FX3 and the a7S3, I think the FX6 shares that same sensor, or the ZVE1, all those kind of cameras share that same 12, 12 megapixel sensor. Do you think it makes that much of a difference? Let me know down in the comments below. That's all I've got today. If you did enjoy this video, make sure that you smash that like button and also click the subscribe button down below to be notified of future videos. Thanks for watching. Take care.